Hello, everybody. It is the American Doofus Show. Don't be a doofus. Tonight, once again, we welcome back Apollo. How you doing, man? Hey, what's going on, man? Anything good? Good. I, well, I'm 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 good now. You know, I went through I went through a stretch. We'll talk about that coming up. Anything new in your life? Yeah, you know, I got married in July and um, just, you know, helping my mom transition. Because, you know, I said I lost my dad in April. So I'm helping my mom transition to her new life and just basically working and handling business, you know? Yeah. Life, keeping you busy. Yeah, pretty busy, you know what I'm saying? But it's slowing down now because I'm getting stuff, got stuff pretty stabilized. So it's slowing down. Okay. And and you're taking some classes, right? Yep, I'm doing, I'm going to uh, social work. So that way I can work with the youth. So I actually just got an opportunity with the Northside YMCA. I'm waiting for my background check to come back where they're going to let me do a teen night two days a week there. And so then I decided, you know, I'm going to go to school for social work. So that way they'll give me a, you know, a little advantage on how to deal with all different types of situations and scenarios and help people out that normally don't get the help. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. I think it's awesome. Right. So, yeah, that's that's just because it's like, you know, and, in, you know, certain communities, you know, like especially when I came from, it's like people don't really like going to the doctor, especially when they're older and then especially mental health. People don't like to, you know, be willing to say I ha I might have a mental health problem, you know, because it's like it's frowned upon. But at the same time, there's so much therapies and stuff out there that they can fix that stuff or help you cope with it better. But people just got to take the initiative to go admit that they got a problem, you know, but exactly too bad it's not common, you know. Yeah, it's not common. It's common for us to uh, to point out other people's shortcomings or other people's uh, symptoms of underlying conditions, uh, right. but it's not popular for us to say, "Hey, man, something ain't right with me." You know, right. I, I I need somebody to I need somebody to talk to about some things. I got things going on in my head that uh, that's that's frowned upon. That's looked down upon, and we need to change that perception. Yeah, I think we can start. Oh, I don't mean to cut you off. I was gonna no. say I think we can start by like you know giving people more confidence to believe in themselves and you know not care what people think because I think that holds up people a lot. I hope people back a lot is that they care how they're gonna be perceived. You know what I'm saying and be judged and all that. And I think once if you can get people's self esteem high enough to where you know they don't care about that type of stuff. You know I think that'll even play a little bit of a part in you know getting people more open to admitting that, you know, maybe I should go talk with somebody or you can, you can do it online. Now you don't even have to go to an office to talk to somebody. Now you can call someone on the phone or do it online with zoom. There's so much options where it's like, there's no reason why not to address it. You know? Exactly. Exactly. And, and in most situations, the, the problem or, or whatever's, <clears throat> you know, the condition or whatever, in many times it's not, um, it's not permanent. It can be worked through and it's not necessarily something that has to be lifelong, you know, right. uh, like people can, you can be, you can be as stable as stable for 50 years and something traumatic happens to you and you think you're just tough and you just are going to bury it and it'll end up keep it keep resurfacing and resurfacing until it keeps growing and growing until it becomes problems in so many different parts of your life. Exactly. Yeah. You, you're speaking facts there. Cause like I said, the thing about this, people suppress so much stuff and be honest with you, I'm guilty of it. You yeah. know, it's easier to, it's easy to suppress stuff and not deal with it in a moment. But the thing about it is, is that the more you suppress, it can surprise you and come out in other areas. You know, like me and my mom was talking one time and it was, she was like, you know, there's situations where you could be suppressing something and you could take it out on somebody that has nothing to do with what you're suppressing. You know what I mean? It'll just come out in a situation because you got triggers inside of you and certain things, certain environments, certain events, and certain just even a smell can trigger certain, you know, reactions in your body. So that's the thing about it. People got to be made aware of what's going on with their body so that way they can understand the triggers and that'll help them deal with the mental health part about it you know, more effectively, I believe, you know, that's just from what I know about it. Yeah. And, and like you said, you keep it bottled up. And if you're bottling up hate and anger, uh, it can, it can, it can come out, it can erupt uh, onto people that don't deserve it. And oftentimes that's what happens. Right. You right. know, and, and a lot of the conflicts we see on online, um, you know, uh, how many of those Karen videos come from a very troubled white woman? 
<laughs> to be honest with you, man, you know, I was looking at mental illness, you know, just like briefly, just like broadly, or shall I say, and um, they were saying most how the what what causes it, and it was the, some of the things they listed was like your childhood trauma. Um, they said um, drugs and alcohol. They said the environment you come from, and it's like all these different things that can cause people to have some type of mental like meltdown almost, and they don't even know what's going on. They just figure they're in a bad mood and, you know, have mood swings and stuff. But a lot of people think that what they consider mood swings is like some of that stuff's mental illness and the stuff that got to be addressed. And like I said, there's so much stuff that can cause it. Like I said, um, one of the things said about childhood trauma, like kids carry so much stuff from their childhood that, you know, they don't even know what they're carrying, you know? And if you don't have someone that's willing to help you or know how to help you dig down into there and reach and figure out that's what's going on, you can struggle with that, like you said, for a lifetime. You know what I'm saying? Right. right, right. And oftentimes, it doesn't have to be that way. It right. doesn't have to be lifetime. Right. You know? But, um, so, I want to just touch on this real briefly. The John Gruden thing. You're familiar with the John Gruden. The Yeah. The, the one with the emails? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I just briefly read that stuff, but yeah, I'm kind of familiar with a little bit what happened. Like he got, he said some homophobic and like racist stuff through emails. It started out with racist stuff about the first email was racist stuff about uh, uh, Demarcus Smith, the uh, president of the Players Union, right? And uh, and it seemed like that wasn't going to be enough, so the NFL released other emails that had misogynistic and homophobic stuff in it okay right. and disgusting stuff right okay this was 10 to 11 years ago when he sent all this stuff he was uh um, right. he was a broadcaster on espn and and when you're a broadcaster in those positions nobody really challenges you on anything right. so he was speaking his mind um and now 10 years later, all this stuff comes out and he ends up resigning instead of trying to fight through it because it would have been too big a distraction to, to his team. Is this a situation where uh, we find out what this, what's been inside this guy for a whole, you know, for the past decade, or is this a situation where the guy did something 10 years ago that he's grown past and, and yet, holds himself accountable for what's come out because you know he he's owning it it's it's at different ends of this and it, it, the reason i'm bringing it up is because can people change right i think people can change but like that's the, the sad part about that is it's like you don't know till you see it because a person can say whatever they want but how they're living their life like i said i don't know how that guy's been living for the past two years but I mean, it's highly likely if he was freely talking like that, he could have, he could that could be embedded in him. But also I think about what I was doing 10 years ago. So then it's just like certain things that I probably thought was okay 10 years ago, I probably don't think okay is now, but something as serious as racism and that other stuff, I feel like, you know, um, we just, just you never, you never know. You never know until you see how they're, how they're living their life. You can't really just trust the person's word. You just, you never know until you just look at the big picture. How are they currently living their life? And have they been consistently living like this and how long? You know, you just yeah. gotta look at that, I mean. Yeah, my, I mean, because my first reaction was complete disgust because I don't talk that way. You right. know, my, my kids don't talk that way. Um, and they're not kids anymore, you know? They, I've got grandkids, but they weren't they weren't raised hearing that kind of that kind of language or or those kind of thoughts and right. um um it just you know it makes you it, it's like you said you don't know until it comes out and it makes you wonder what other people actually really think you know they give this public persona but what's really going on in their head and it more importantly in their heart right and you just think you never truly know until you just see how they treat people, how they treat others, because it eventually comes out to surface, especially like the thing about it is that the, the only positive that came from this recent protest or whatever the past, you know, that we was dealing with, with the George Floyd thing. One of the positives that came out of that is that a lot of people got comfortable and Trump was in office around the same time or whatever. It was all in, you know, in the same little era or whatever. But the Trump thing was going on and the people, you know, with the George Floyd and stuff, and it was like people's 
true feelings came out because people was real comfortable. And it's just like, that was a, I consider that a positive because like, I'm not going to judge or hold against the person, but it also lets me know where certain Who people they are. are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And that's why, and that's why I say about this coach. I wonder what he felt. I want to see ask him, how does he feel about the protest or something like that and see what he says. And because a lot of stuff people can kind of tell you what their agenda is. If you just read, they're not going to directly come out. Most people, some people will, but most people ain't going to directly come out and just expose themselves. But if you really pay attention you can pick up on it by their actions and conversations, you know? Yeah. Yeah. A guy that I wouldn't, uh, a guy texted me during the Colts game the other night. Okay. Indianapolis Colts running back caught the ball, went 74 yards for a touchdown on like the second play of the game, you know? All right. And, and the guy texted me and said, he looked like he was running. He, he was running as fast as somebody being chased by Indianapolis police. Right. You know, and, and right. with, with LOL, you know, now right. that's not overtly racist, but it's also, you know, why, why do you have to say that? You know what I mean? It, it, right. so, it, it, it makes me question what's really inside the guy. Right. And like I said, I, I've been in a situation like that. You know, like I said, the protests helped a lot of people. I was just hearing conversations on this stuff, but the way I look at it is, you know, Eventually, people will show themselves, and you just got to choose to deal with them or not. But, like, for example, that coach, another aspect of that coach, and I'm not going to go that deep into it, but when I heard about that email story, so I kind of just briefly read it or whatever. Right. And the first thing the first thing I thought of was the connection to – um, that you know, Dave Chappelle just had a comedy show. I don't know if you watched it on Netflix. It's, like, been big in the news because he said some controversial, quote-unquote, controversial stuff in, a, in his comedy show. And it was towards the um, LGBT community or whatever. And so – um. The point being is, is that um, I just feel like, um, I don't know. I feel like, I don't want to say it, but I just feel like there's a big deal out of what they want to make a big deal out of if they're involved in it. But if it's just a single people, it's not made that big of a deal out of. And that's what people was missing the point he was saying in that comedy show. He said some stuff that was offensive to people, but what he was trying to say is that uh, something he said in the show was like, you know, a guy can kill somebody and his career is fine. But if he says something about a certain group, they can cancel him and end his career. He was just saying how things are like that. You know, yeah, I don't things know. If are, you, things are right. like that. Right. And so it's just like, I just think about that. And it's like, that kind of plays a part in some of this stuff. And it's just like, I just still feel like a lot of stuff that goes on around, especially what's being accepted or whatever. It's like, things are changing to where people are more open to be who they are. But at the same breath, it's like, there's just people waiting for people to expose people. And it's just like this whole big, it's almost like political slash, I don't know what the other words to call it, but it's just this, it's like this war of just going at each other. It's like this group against that group. And it's causing a lot of people to get sucked into it. And it's just, I still go back to the, what I say. We need some people in high places that are regular thinkers because this world is weird as heck, man. It's been worlds. It's been weird for like, what do you think about three, four years? It's been super weird. Probably five or six. Yeah, it's like you it's know, like a twilight zone, man. Going back to going back to like uh, the end of the Obama era, you know, when he was president. Last two years, he was president. The Republicans controlled everything in Congress, and absolutely nothing got done. So right. it made it made the you know simply because they refused. If if anything was Obama's idea, it had to be a bad idea, except right. for except for killing uh, Osama bin Laden. You know, right. and right. they don't even really truly acknowledge that happened during his presidency. So right. it, it, yeah, the but it probably goes back to Watergate. Actually, when things mm -hmm. really started getting weird politically and really right. totally corrupt on both sides, you know. Right. Um, I just feel like I don't, I don't really trust politics like that. I mean, because I, mean, I feel like How can you? I know. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's just like it's, it's like them versus them and the people aren't aren't even a factor in it. Like nothing they do is for the benefit of the people. It's like some other agenda that's usually you already know what it is. Money or power. Yeah, right. It's, it's like about two, staying, two it's about getting reelected. Once you get there, the first thing you start doing is raising money to get reelected in the next election, no matter when it is. And right. that's that's asinine. But right. it's political theater. It's all theater. You know, it's. Um, High speed rail is a good idea from uh, a straight shot from New York City to L.A., you know, right. um, 
but if it's if it's black owned high speed speed rail, well, that's not you know we don't we don't need no high speed rail. That's what they said. No, I'm just using that as an oh. example okay. of of okay. how it can work. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But I don't know. I just like I said, even like when I think about that guy with the email situation, who do you think leaked those emails and why? Like, what's your first thought on that? My first thought is it's a distraction from something else that they're trying to make go away or hope doesn't come out and draw attention. Right. Because it, yeah. because it's 10 years old. Right. Because it's again, there was seven between 650,000 and 700,000 emails in total. And out of those, the only ones that have been released are John Gruden's personal emails. Right. You know, and they were sent to, Daniel Snyder, who was president of the New York or the Washington football team then. And none of his emails have been released. And yet he was fined $10 million and told he couldn't be part of the day-to-day -day operations of the team. Wow. So, you know, what's up? I don't know. Like I said, if people got agendas, man, there's people in power, man, that, oh. you know, they, it's like a whole bunch of games, man. It's like they're doing some do tricks, some do it out in the open, but it's just like, the people in power right now are weird, and it, until people come together and take over them situations, it's like it's going to just get weirder because it's like it seems like the world's just getting weirder. It's like they're like focused on the wrong things. It's like this is, I don't yeah. know, it's crazy to me, you know, and, it, and there's certain people that care about certain things, and that's why I say my focus is I'm just going to focus on what I want to focus on, which is I want to help young black youth. You, you. That's my focus on, so I just can figure out ways to keep active or you know in that's in that scenario while doing my regular full-time job or whatever but um it's just i don't know like i said as far as that racism stuff that do with the emails I, honestly i think a lot of people are like that especially you know certain from certain areas and certain age groups i think it's a lot of people that's like that and it's like it's just people are comfortable grew up in households and hung around people that was comfortable saying and doing that type of stuff and so if it slips up and come out you know, I think a lot of people hide it. And I think that Trump made a lot of people comfortable, but I still think even when Trump was popular that there was people who were hiding it still. And I think it was a lot. I really do. And it's just like, it doesn't yeah. surprise me because we live in America and it's like, it's always been a race issues in America. So it's like, it doesn't surprise me that people think that way and keep it hidden or the people that let it out there. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's just like, you know, so what are you going to do now? Are you about to evolve or are you just going to stay in that stupid think of mind? But, with these youth that's coming up, I think they're going to change that. And I think it might be, I don't know how many generations it's going to take, but I see it already changing to where they're not even listening to what their grandpa says. And it's like, I see it. And so it's just like, there's hope. So I'm to be honest with you, I got, I got optimism with the future when it comes to race relations, to be honest with you, because I see how the young people are acting with each other, they're not judging each other. They're not seeing color lines. It's like, it's just a whole different vibe. And so hopefully that's the, even though I think they're weird, them youth are super weird, but in <laughs> that in that aspect, man, I, I'm impressed. Yeah. Just go just go to a park or, or a gym and just look at how they interact with each other. It's just like it's not really no color lines, you know what I'm saying? If you're in certain environments. And so that's like I said, that's there's hope, but you can't save everybody. You can't change people, force people to change their thinking. It's just we gotta accept people for who they are and just deal with them accordingly, you know? Yeah. And and I personally feel better about the fact that we're not going to have any kind of civil war because we pretty much made it through the summer. How are you feeling about that? That's one of the things we talked about the last time we we spoke. Well, I didn't, like I told you, honestly, I didn't take it too serious because I kind of knew that it's like, to be honest with you, man, online, like I said before, online, you can be whoever you want to be. You know what I'm saying? You could be, I could be Bruce Lee's son, you know what I'm saying? That happens to be black by a black lady that nobody ever heard about. And I can just tell people that and live that life. So you can say what you want. I, I'm not, I don't too much believe stuff just in my face. Just like, I, like, like, for example, social media. I consider that some people's world, some people that are dedicated to it. But, oh, man. In, real, yeah. but, in, but in real life, it's like them people aren't what they present themselves to be in real life. And so that's the way I take the whole little, so I'm skeptical about a lot of stuff, that, especially when it's online. It's like, oh, they're just beefing online, acting a fool. It ain't, it ain't gonna, spill over to the streets yeah. or into real life you know so that's i i never really took that threat to be honest with you as far as the civil war i never even considered that as a threat okay and how how are things how are things up north oh it's bad man we got the youth going crazy they shooting like 
crazy. I mean, it's like it's like a little war or something that's been going on for you know since before the beginning of the summer, and it's just like it's like that sixteen to twenty seven, twenty eight group are just warring, shooting like crazy, and it's just like no one can come up with answers. You know what I'm saying? But it's like. Pfft. I don't know what they're gonna do. It's just not on the news. It's not on national news. But yes, it's it's real bad in North Minneapolis right now and yeah. in St. Paul, Minnesota. I keep I keep track of it online, you know, through some through some sites that I started mm-hmm. following when the George Floyd murder happened. Okay, right. you said you have hope in the in the youth and right. the way and the way the races are interacting. Right. Is do you have? Can you put a a finger anywhere close to why the the black youth war with each other no no guidance no nothing it's like the bottom line the common denominator is poverty there's a lot of children that were born into poverty and there was a lot of children whose parents was born into poverty and it's because of systematic set the way the system was set up and the system still like that because i i see what they do they reward people for being in poverty, if you really think about it. So it's like, there's people that need help to get on their feet. I understand that. But the thing about it is it's just like, I just feel like poverty is the, always the common denominator. That's just any, anything you can talk about in, from the community I come from is poverty. Money has been an issue, has been taken away. And I, it's a lot of hands in it that's keeping it the way it is. And, and so with the way it is, these young boys don't have no fathers because their fathers are in survival mode. Their great grandfather was in survival mode, meaning you'll sell drugs, you'll join a gang, do whatever you, you got to do. You got to do whatever you do to, to bring money. That's not around. Yeah. That's not around. And most single mothers, you know, they can't handle And there's no disrespect to women. Women are strong, but there's a single a lot of single women can't handle these young boys. So it's like when they hit the streets, their role models are other, are older boys, young boys. that went through what they went through. And it's a cycle that just goes and goes. And that's why I figured my key is why I was like, okay. Maybe if we get to the youth and throw, I can, you can save 30 of them with just one male role model. So it's just like, I'm trying to get in. Like, that's why I got into what I'm saying, because once I get in, she said, I can bring in other guys that I grew up with. So I got a couple of people I'm going to reach out to and be like, you know, let's come, just come watch the kids play basketball in the gym. You know, they're about to get a new computer room. So just come up here and just help them log into the internet, simple stuff. And it's just like stuff like that makes a big difference because if you giving them kids some time, they're more likely to listen to you and want to be around you. And, and what you say, it kind of helps. It kind of goes in their brain a little bit. But to get back to what you asked me, what's making it go like that? No guidance. You can, it's a free for all. The police aren't over North Minneapolis because of the protests. So a lot of them quit, retired early and everything because they were, they refused to work there. So the police, there's barely any over there. So you can pretty much do whatever you want. People driving around like 90 to 100 miles per hour, you know, just do a 30 mile per hour zone. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's reckless, man. And so like, but it goes back to, like I said, you got to blame the system for this because that's part of it. That's a big part of it. you got to blame the system. Yes, people make decisions and parents can do better, but you got to blame the system that is the foundation of this, that creates this poverty, that creates these situations. Right before you and I, uh, right before you and I began the recording, I was out in the other room on my computer and I got notification that, uh, and I, and I wrote it down every 14 days, at least one person dies in an Indiana jail, whether it be local, county, state, or federal. Every 14 days, someone dies in an Indiana jail. The death penalty or just from sickness or different things? Different things. Wow. Not the, not, that- not the death penalty, no. No. Oh, not- I thought you said they kill people that often. I was like, dang. <laughs> no, not the death penalty. No. Right. These are people dying from... Um, overdoses um a lot of them from sickness uh several from covid um and a couple from questionable encounters with guards that are how long has it been going on how long has it been going on investigation um in the past 18 months every every 14 days someone dies in a jail in indiana and i just found that you know, that's like, okay, uh, 52 weeks. That's, you know, that's, that's not, that's 28 people. Man, uh, that's a lot. Yeah. And no one's doing anything about it. They're not investigating this. Like the FBI well, jumped on this. 
FBI is not investigating it. No, I got it from a, I got it from a friend who's trying, who's um, who works for a news works for a channel and, and had the information and they're not paying a lot of attention to it. So he asked me to get this out uh, and, and hopefully some, uh, some local channel will pick this up and go, what, what? That's crazy, man. But like I said, don't surprise me. This world is weird, man. We're in a twilight zone, man. I don't know what's going on with this world. Like people always say, I remember when I was younger, people, oh, these are the last days. We're living in the last days. Now people saying it again. But it's just like, I don't know if I would think that extreme, but this is, these are some weird times, man, that we're living in, man. It's like, I've never, it's just some stuff that happens. It's like, man, what is going on? Is this a dream, you know? Yeah. And and the stuff that uh, um, that we find out after the fact, you know, and, and that's, and that's going to be a problem with this virus, with this vaccine. Uh, we're going to find out things after the fact, right? you know, right. five years. Well, down I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know. To be honest with you, man, the whole vaccine issue. It's like, I got both of them. My kids got them. My mom got them. Yeah. And to be honest with you, dude, I just feel like, and you know, I, you know, I always got weird perspectives, but I feel like with that whole vaccine issue, I feel like it's only an issue because social media made it an issue. I really do believe that. And I feel like that Trump made it an issue. So that made it an issue. I feel like there's 19 trillion sheep running around this earth, man. It's like, it's just a bunch of followers, man. People, are, it's this group of people that would just, you can just guide them to anything, you know? And it's just yeah. like, that's that's what I think is all. Because the other man, it's like, man, what happened to the chicken pox vaccine and all these other vaccines we got? It's like, why don't y'all make a big fuss about this? You're making a big fuss about this because somebody originally said make a big fuss about this. And that's that's just my perspective on it. No, I I uh, you know I didn't get vaccinated right away, but as soon as it right. I became eligible, I did. But there had already right. been like five million people vaccinated before me, you know. Right. So you got to have some pretty good stats out of five million samples. Uh, I felt oh. pretty comfortable and I still do, you know, I have a feeling I might've picked up COVID a couple of times since I got oh, really? vaccinated. Yeah. Right. My uh, brother caught it after, my brother caught it after vaccination. And, and it wasn't severe, thankfully. Right. You no. Know? Right. Um, okay. Because of the vaccine. Yep. What about, have you, did you hear Captain Kirk uh, from, from Star Trek? <laughs> He went to space <laughs> yesterday. Did you hear about that? Yeah, I seen that. He got off and he was like, he's like had a magical moment. Like it was just like this like biggest moment of his life. I mean, that would be cool, but not for me. I'm cool, man. I don't. Yeah, I'm not, not gonna space work, bro. I'm not big on heights. Um, you know, I get up in a tall building and I start. Yeah, I'm. I, and I don't know if I'd do well going to space. But is that a priority? Space tourism should that be where? Billions of dollars are going when well, you know, according to the rich people, yeah. <laughs> the rich people, rich people don't care about nobody but themselves. Not all, I'm not gonna say all, but majority of rich people yeah. don't care about nothing but themselves. So they just got so much money to burn because they done found so many loopholes, they can afford to do that. Next year, man, watch, they're gonna probably buy a planet. You never know, man. These people be having all types of things in the works that we as common people don't know nothing about. It's just these what do they call them, the elites. Yeah, we have all types of secrets and things that that's in the works. We're just late on it, you know. So, oh, I, I, I mean, it ain't no big deal to me. Like, congratulations, but it's like, but I don't even like airplanes. You think I want to go out in space? I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I ain't nothing up there. What about the fight up there? You know, say so like, oh, there it is. Cool, take me back home. But no, I understand it. He got money to do it. I guess that's what he want to do. Knock your socks off. Yeah. But I don't hate it. I think you got the kind of money you do whatever you want. You no, know, you got the money to do whatever you want. So, and he's old. He's like ninety something, ain't he? He's ninety years old. Yeah, that was the right, next thing right. I was going to bring up. The guy's ninety years old, and you know, right. I don't, I don't, you know, if, if I if I was ninety years old and I'd been in a fictional series where I played I was in space, you know, for right. for ten years or whatever, uh, and got a chance to go into space, yeah, right, you know. But it's, I, guess. I don't know, man. It just, it, um, the last thing I want to talk about is, is, you know, we've been talking a lot about mental health and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and what basically happened to me, um, 
when when Kay passed away, uh, we hadn't been together that long, but we drew to get we drew real close in the time we were together, and it was a tremendous loss, and it came on the heels of um, a, a horrific divorce where, you know, I I don't even want to bring that back up, and I put a lot of I put it all away. I didn't deal I didn't deal with any of it. Okay, right. and when Kay passed away, I started doing the show. On, you know, I started putting everything into the show because that's what it felt like. That's the only thing I had. Right. And so for uh, over a year, I hadn't. I didn't really begin the process of dealing with the fact that Kay passed away, and and right. all the other stuff I was carrying. Right. And uh, because of COVID, because of travel restrictions. Kay's family had had not had a celebration of life or remembrance or anything like that for Kay in all that time. And um, when we had when when they had that, they invited me. And uh, when I was there uh, on the way home from there, I lost it. Right. I just lost it. And everything started coming out. And uh, and. You know, I, I haven't admitted any of that to anybody. You know, I just shut myself off for two weeks and processed it, basically. Right. With the exception right. of, of one good friend that I communicate with every single day. You know, I, I, I didn't tell anybody I was dealing with this stuff. Right. And, yeah. and the lesson learned from that is when something happens, you get help dealing with it right then. Don't let it fester. Don't let it grow. That's true. It's, it, like I said, it'll come out in other ways. And, you know, it could be, a, and you, I think too, it could have been a combination thing too. Like you said, you had a divorce and I don't know how that went. But you, oh, it, it, the story, it, what the yeah. story you told it. Yeah, it was like you had just came back from out of town. I remember the story somewhat. And it's yeah. just like, man, you, you got, you got, that, that's like compounded, you know, like trauma to your emotions. And so it's like, yeah, I mean, I would recommend that people like I was just we was just saying earlier, like even I'm hearing your situation, what you're saying. It's like I feel like you should be, you know, maybe do a Zoom with somebody once or twice a month. You know what I'm saying? And just you'll be surprised. Because the thing about this, people think like it's like, oh yeah, whatever, I don't need that. But what is it gonna hurt to try? Because it's like the thing about is you need to help unpack that. You can't figure all that out on your own. You're not a rocket scientist. You can you gotta have a professional that knows what's going on with you and can get you on track because you might not think you're off track that bad. You, you probably way worse than what you think too. You know that could be a scenario. Yeah. So I would say talk to somebody, man, at least twice a month to start off with. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, you can do it right on the Zoom. And yeah. It's like it's you got health insurance; it's free. It's really no excuse not to do it. You know, and I would recommend that to anybody. But like I said, I just lost my father, and you know I got it in the back of my head. Like certain things, it's only been since April, but if certain things don't get right. You know, I'm gonna probably sit down and chat with somebody. You know, I'm gonna yeah. give myself a little time though to get through it the natural way. But if I feel like there's something to talk about, hey, I'm gonna practice what I preach and I'm gonna go talk to somebody. But everyone's gotta get to the point where you got you can't be ashamed of that, dude. It's just like you're just trying to fix yourself. You got something with a little haywire, and you're just trying to get the wire back together and fix yourself. Don't yeah. be embarrassed by it. You know, yeah. don't be embarrassed by it. Ain't nothing wrong with it. We oh, all go oh, through it. Yeah. I, I talked a little bit about it last week. Uh, but you know, um, I, I didn't lay out the actual um, specifics of of what happened, and I and I thought, you know, when it when it happened, I thought, well, I'm just going to take a couple of days away because, man, the online stuff's stressful, you know. Right. Um, when because the 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 type of show I normally do, um, it touches on a lot of different things that that potentially trigger people. Right. And, and I get a lot of, I get a lot of hate, you know, right. from, from a lot of different sides. And uh, right. I just, it's, I felt like I'd been at war uh, for a year is what I felt like that I'd been, I'd been constantly trying to prevent a war from happening, which was my own private war that I was fighting. And I just, right. I felt like, you know, when you're at war, man, you got to take some time off. Otherwise, you know, you fry. And uh, I thought I'm going to take a couple of days off. It ended up being almost two weeks, but it was necessary. 
you know, because now I can deal with, you know, the stuff. So you, um, so you feel like you, you all the way back right now? No, absolutely not. No, right. I'm, I'm right. back enough where I can deal with stuff, you right. know, but no, no, I'm not even close to being back to where I should be. Yeah. Right. And I got to get, I, I got to, you know, continue to talk with people about that. Yeah, but I still say, like I said, I'm going to say it again, twice a week with a professional. It's free. Use your health insurance. It's just like, just at least, you know, in the beginning, just to start off with. Then if you want to cut it down to once a week or once a month or whatever you want to do, but I meant twice a month, not twice a week, but twice a month. But then if you want to cut it down to once a month, then that's what you do. But I, like I said, certain trauma, man, you ain't meant to get through it by yourself. You can try, like if it's been a short period of time, you can try to see if you're just going to get through it with time. But if you, if you see something, even stuff from old stuff coming up in certain situations, you got to really take a look at yourself and see like, and be honest with yourself. And that's how you know if, you know, maybe you can't handle this or maybe something's going on that's deeper than what you think. And you got to be responsible and say, I'm going to be honest with myself and I'm going to go seek some help because ain't nothing wrong with that. And usually, like you said earlier, it's usually reversible, dude. It doesn't yeah. mean it is permanent. You know what I'm saying? Like you said earlier, it doesn't mean it is permanent. People go through trauma, man. It's like trauma it releases all types of chemicals out of your, you know, through your body and different reactions. It's like the brain and the body is like a very complicated, you know, thing. And it's just like, people would be surprised what certain situations and environments can do to you physically. It's yeah. unbelievable, man. Yeah. And like I said, dude, get, don't be ashamed, man. It's like, we all go through it. We all go through that. And you guys just remember, you're here for a reason. You're going through it for a reason. That's how you got to set your brain to that. You're here for a reason and you're going through what you're going through for a reason. Yeah. And usually it's to strengthen you up. And you have, and usually every situation, you can take a left or a right. So you can do what's right with your situation or you can do what's wrong with your situation. And that depends on the outcome. So it's just like, just know just everybody goes through something. Don't be afraid to, to ask for help if you need help and just be honest with yourself. That's all, you know, and don't be afraid. You know what I'm saying? Nothing to be ashamed of. I appreciate you, brother. Always, you know that? Right. It's all good, man. Yeah. It's all good. We'll, we'll talk in about three more months and see where you're <laughs> at. Right. All hopefully right. you'll be, hopefully you'll be out at the bar partying and back to your full self playing your bass guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. All right, thank, thank you all for watching. It's the American Doofus Show. Don't be a doofus. Do subscribe, like, and share this episode if you would. Uh, if you want to leave us a comment, you can do so at the bottom. If you want to email me, it's American Doofus at gmail.com. And until next time, um, the American Doofus Show. Don't be a doofus.